everyone, I'm Mine, and this is set number 71469, Nightmare Shark Ship from the Lego Dreams theme. This set contains 1,389 pieces, four minifigures, as well as two micro figures? I guess they're not technically micro figures, because micro figures are a different thing, but yeah, they're like these little guys. We'll take a look at them in a little bit. But they come in a lot of sets this way, including this one, and you get two of them in this set. And this set retails for $139.99 in the US. This set does not officially release until August 1st, 2023, but it was sent to me early by the Lego group through the Lego Master Network, but all opinions expressed in this video are my own. Every Lego Dreams set includes some sort of alternate build, and I will be covering both builds in this video. So make sure to watch all the way through if you want to see how the different builds look. Also make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and let me know in the comments which LEGO Dream set you want to see an early review on next. I'll be doing early reviews of all the LEGO Dream sets, but I'm going to be doing the most requested ones first. So make sure to let me know which ones you guys want to see. But now let's get into the review. So here's the main build of the Nightmare Shark Ship, and I know this is a set that a lot of people are excited for. When I did my unboxing video and I did polls on like which set you guys want to see reviewed first, almost unanimously people wanted to see this one. There was a lot of people saying, oh, this is the only Dream set I'm interested in. And I'm not going to lie, while I like this one from initial pictures, I wasn't as crazy about it as some other people. Like, I thought it looked good, don't get me wrong. But there's other sets I was more excited by, and I wasn't planning to buy this one. However, of course, LEGO was generous enough to send it to me early. And now having it built up, I have to say, I understand the hype. This is easily the best set of the first LEGO Dreams wave. There is just so much of this that is super cool. There's some really cool parts, the colors here are amazing. It's like spooky and ominous, but it's also super fun. So let's take a look at everything up a little bit closer. So starting at the head of the shark ship, I absolutely adore the shaping here. It's entirely brick built, but it's so clear what it's supposed to be. I especially love the spring green teeth pieces. Those were used a lot in like Lego Hidden Side, but I think they're done perfectly here where they're not overbearing. There's not like a ton of spring green on the build, but it's used just the perfect amount. I also kind of like that the eyes don't have any printing. Something about that just makes this a little bit scarier. And you can see there's a sticker piece at the top right here that has some stripes on it as well as some stitching. That of course ties into the Lego Dream show because slight spoilers, I guess. But in the show, the shark ship is like a modification of a shark plush. So it's cool that they keep those plush elements here with those little stitches, but still manage to make it look super creepy. There's two knobs on the sides of the shark's head and each of them do different things. If we turn this one right here, it actually lifts the shark's mouth up. So that way if you have it constantly spinning, you can have them like chomping while he's flying through the air. Or if you just turn a little bit, you can actually hold the mouth open instead. And that allows you to see into the shark's mouth a little bit better. Inside of here, you can see there's a string that's threaded through and it's got a hook on the end. And that's what the knob on the other side is for, is it actually lets loose that hook. Now the hook itself is not gonna propel forward just by spinning this. You either have to pull it out yourself or like lean the shark forward. But of course, if you reverse it the other direction, it'll pull the hook back. So I guess the idea is the shark ship could hook onto something and then pull it back into its mouth and eat it. If you're curious if a minifigure could fit into the shark's mouth, I mean kinda. You you can definitely put a figure in there and then close it up around them, but the mouth itself can't close completely with a figure in there, and it doesn't like reach into a throat or anything. You can see instead the back of the mouth is just kind of walled off. Still though, I think this is done absolutely perfectly. The shape is amazing, the colors are great, and it's a ton of fun to play with too. This is definitely the highlight of the entire build. Moving back a little bit, we have these wings or fins on ball joints on the side of the ship, and you can see there's one of those on each side. But then moving back in the shark's body, you can see there's this sort of rib cage design. It alternates black with these bright colors, started with coral and then going into a pink and then a magenta later on, which we'll see in a little bit. And they use like these curved black pieces all throughout. However, in the very center right here, they use like the long tentacle pieces on robot arms, and that makes this section very much look like a rib cage. However, it also doubles as a prison for minifigures in this set. You can lift these rib parts up to get easier access inside. And looking inside there, yeah, the colors match everything else with the white, like the head of the shark, and then we also have magenta, pink, and coral, all those colors that I mentioned. But this build is not only meant to be a prison, but it's also meant to be a bed. Because of course, this is Lego Dreams, this is the Nightmare King ship, so his prison is actually a bed where minifigures could sleep. You can see there's a little jumper piece inside to attach a minifigure to. And there's how a figure looks actually sleeping on the bed, and then you can close the rib cage back up around them. And there's how it looks on the outside. I love that so much. It perfectly combines like the silliness and the spookiness of Lego Dreams. This is the kind of goofy fun that Lego sets should be, in my opinion. And then removing the minifigure, looking behind the bed, you can see there's a stickered piece right there of a picture frame, and just got a picture of the Nightmare King as well as all those nightmare creatures around him. Because I suppose whatever character's laying here is having nightmares of the Nightmare King. Not sure how it works if you're sleeping in the dream realm. Are you like double dreaming? I don't know. I might be overthinking it a little bit. But yeah, that's a very cool area of the build. Now moving back a little bit further, we have these giant engines on the side of the shark ship. These are amazing builds too, there's so many cool pieces used. First they use these large wheel pieces in gunmetal gray, and you can see those are able to spin too. I love how they interlock together too, and just the jaggedness of it all gives off the perfect villain vibe. There's little green teeth at the front of the engine too, these are not my favorite just because these teeth pieces are so easy to accidentally knock out of place. It does give you more customizability options, but if you're playing with this, they'll probably fall out of place sometimes. Not a huge deal, but just something to be aware of. But I do like how they brought back that spring green color right there. And then the back of the engines is probably the coolest 
coolest part of the ship. So they use like these large rounded wall pieces. I remember first seeing these on like Lego Space Police 3 when I was a kid. They were in Trans Blue in those sets and they were used as prisons to hold minifigures. And I thought they were the coolest thing, like this futuristic prison. But this has to be one of the best recolors of them yet. Because they're in like this sparkly purple color, which I believe was originally introduced for Lego Dots. But seeing it on such a big piece is so cool because usually it's reserved for like little studs and whatnot. But you can still see through it a little bit. It's not as transparent as say Trans Blue. But that gives it a very like foggy, spooky feel and fits the vibes of the ship so perfectly. And you can see inside of it, they have these printed eyepieces underneath. One big one and two small ones. And man, that just looks so cool. I love that. You also have these exhausts coming out the sides that are shooting lightning out. And then these giant blasts at the very end. Now these are all new parts of the LEGO Dream sets for this wave. They come in a few different colors and a few different sets. And I believe this color is exclusive to this set. It's dual molded in like trans pink and purple. And I think that looks fantastic. You can see the engines are exactly the same on the other side too, just mirrored. But once again, you have the sparkly transparent pieces with the eyeballs inside. And you can see there is another of those pieces on the underside of the engines. However, this one does not have like the eyeballs inside it. Now coming up to the upper level of the ship, you can see there's this giant blade that comes off or there's a lantern hanging down off of it. This can be hinged upward if you want to change how it looks, but I personally think it looks the best just down. There's a couple sticker pieces around the side too. It looks like these are meant to be like gray wooden planks. And this one has like some spikes coming out of it too. I like the use of like these tendril pieces. I believe these were used in the Lego Lord of the Rings set in this color. I could be wrong about that, but regardless, that's a pretty cool color for that part. And then here's the main deck of the ship. And I will say the space here is a little bit disappointing. It's not bad and you can definitely fit some many figures, but I don't know, from pictures, I was expecting this entire set to be a lot bigger. In hand, everything just feels a little bit small. And it is jam-packed full of detail, like there's no part of the set that I would say looks bad, but I kind of wish there was more space to pose minifigures, because yeah, there's not a ton here. There's a couple studs up at the very front of the ship, then we have these little turrets with stud shooters on them, and they have like these little circular jumper pieces at the back. This is a good place for like the smaller nightmare villains to stand. And then you can see there's a bit more space in the center right here, but still not a ton of space. And there's like this little handle here, which you can pull up. That's of course a hatch that leads into the dungeon. So if you want to have the villains capture a minifigure, you can drop them in from the top right here, so that way you don't have to open up the sides. However, of course, opening from the sides allows you to pose the minifigure in there a little bit better. The set uses these giant wing pieces of sails, and I think they look awesome. Now, those are not exclusive to this set. They're the same wings used on the Pegasus Flying Horse set, but using them as sails instead is so creative, and I think it works so well. And it also sort of doubles as fins for the shark, too. This set has so many different aesthetics that it's trying to combine. It's trying to be a shark, an airship, as well as, like, this nightmare creature, but it all comes together so well, in my opinion, and creates one amazing build. And then you can see the second, like, wing sails up here. Looking at this back section, you can see this is another raised platform. There actually is a pretty good bit of figure space up here. Again, not as much as I'd want, but you've got, like, this huge throne for the Nightmare King and room to pose a few figures around him, too. So I'd say I definitely like this a lot more than the display space in the other parts of the set. They use more of those tendril pieces as well as handcuff pieces for railings, which works so perfectly. And actually, I really like the way they did these lanterns, too. There's four of them in this set. And they just use, like, the Harry Potter lantern piece. However, what I really like is how they use a solid color for the inside instead of using, like, transparent yellow or something. The solid yellow just feels a lot more cartoony to me, and it pops so much more. And of course, it matches with all the yellow eyeballs everywhere. Speaking of, I really like how the Nightmare King's throne at the back is done. They reincorporate the white here, and that's used so infrequently in the build, so it definitely helps the throne stand out. And there's how the Nightmare King looks actually standing and driving the ship. And then I guess I probably should have looked at this before, but here's the tail at the very back of the ship. You can see it's able to be moved up and down. And then the fin at the very end is also on a ball joint, so it can be swung any way you want. I think the bat wings here work super well, and fit perfectly with everything else in this set. And then of course, there's an interior to this section right here. First though, to get in, we have to remove this giant eyeball at the front. You just flip these tooth pieces up and it can fall out. And I think this is actually meant to be its own little creature because it's got like these little legs on the inside. So it could just be like this giant eyeball spider thing, which is really silly, but I actually love it. And then you can see inside this section a little bit. However, it's not the easiest to access. Luckily, this entire section is meant to be easily removed. You just simply pull up off the base of the build. And there we go. There's the shark ship with it removed. You can see this reveals a little printed lock piece. And if you press down on that to represent like using a key on the lock, that actually pops up this treasure chest piece right next to it. So then you can remove the treasure chest. It's the newer square treasure chest piece that's used in LEGO Minecraft and LEGO Harry Potter. And if you open it up, you can see there's two golden bars inside. Here's where the chest sits, and I'll put it back away for now. And then here's the section I removed. Now this can actually open up so you can get better access inside. You can just pull it open for both sides. And inside you can see there's a few things in here. We have like a flintlock pistol, a harpoon gun. This is the LEGO hourglass piece, which of course if you've seen the LEGO Dream show is pretty important. And I believe this piece isn't new for this wave. I think it's coming like LEGO Harry Potter sets before. But it does have an all new printed part for this wave on top, with just like this printed hourglass logo on it. And then in the center, we have Bunchu. This is meant to be Izzy's plush bunny. And while the plush bunny's not new for this set, this is an all-new recolor as well as an all-new print. And I guess the Nightmare King stole it from her and is keeping it in here. But yeah, I like how this opens up and you can get a good bit of stuff in here. But now let's reattach it to the ship. And I think that's about everything for the main build of the shark ship. However, as I mentioned earlier in this video, every LEGO Dream set has an alternate build. The way the alternate build works, though, is a little bit different from previous sets with alternate builds. For one, it's not an alternate build of the entire set. There's like a base form of the set that doesn't come apart. If I remember correctly, the set had a total of 14 bags of parts. And the way you build the first 12 bags is the same no matter
matter what. But then there's two different ways you can build bags 13 and 14. This is of course the versions on the front of the box, but now let me remove bags 13 and 14 to show you the base form of the ship, and then I'll add them back on as the alternate build, so that way you can see the alternate version of the ship. Another thing that's kind of interesting that's different from previous alt builds is that neither of the builds uses every single piece in the set. In like Creator 3 and 1, the main build will use every piece, and then the alternate build to only use some of the pieces. But no, even though this is the main build of the ship, you can see in this bag here I have all these leftover parts and these are going to be used for the alternate build, but then I'm sure the alternate build's going to have some pieces left over too. It truly feels like both builds of this set are meant to be the main build, and it's entirely up to you which one you want to keep together, like the second one's not an afterthought like it is in some of the creator sets. So yeah, with all that being said, let me take bags 13 and 14 off, and then rebuild this into the alternate build. So the exact pieces I have to remove are the wings on the sides of the ship, the engines at the back, unfortunately, as cool as these are, the giant wing sails on top of the ship, and then the eyeball piece in the center. And there's the base form of the ship with bags 13 and 14 removed, and it doesn't look bad, but it definitely feels like something's missing. It's just a shark without any limbs. It feels like it needs to be able to actually do something. So now let me put together the alternate build. While I'm doing that though, I want to take a moment to plug my speed builds channel, Speed Builds by Mine. I just started this up about a month ago and I'm trying to get more consistent with posting. I have speed builds of almost every single one of these summer 2023 Ninjago sets up and I'm going to be doing speed builds of all the LEGO Dream sets too, including this one. So if you like speed build content and you're interested in seeing that, make sure to go check that channel out and subscribe after you're finished with this video. But now let's get back to the review. All right, and here we are. Here's the alternate build of the shark ship, where you can see it's no longer an airship and it's more of like a monster truck. It's now, of course, got four wheels at the bottom. Those giant thrusters at the back have become cannons at the front, but then, of course, the main body of the ship is exactly the same. The wheels are, of course, hard plastic, however, they still roll around just fine. However, depending on the surface you're actually rolling them on, it may not be the best. That's why rubber wheels are typically better, but these plastic ones do look really cool and fit the ship perfectly, so personally, I don't mind they're not rubber, because these really wouldn't work at all as rubber. The giant cannons at the top still use those, like, rounded half-cylinder pieces that they use, both of them surrounding those eyes. I'm really happy the eyes are still in the center there, because, yeah, it looks great. But what was previously the exhaust to, like, move the vehicle forward is now a blast coming out. The giant blasters are attached to those masts and it's able to spin a little bit, but then each individual blaster is also in a ball joint. So there's a pretty good range of motion there. You can aim them wherever you want it, like whatever enemy you're facing. The wing sails at the top have been replaced with little crow's nests, so you can put many figures up here just looking out if you want. And you can see that's basically the same at the back too. And where the thrusters used to be, there's now these little black wings. And obviously these aren't nearly as cool, but I do think they fit this version of the build and do a good job to cover up that like open area. Now that eyeball that covered the entrance to the interior is completely gone. And that's because now it's its own little side build. You can see it's the yellow eye in the center with the white surrounding it. And they use those giant wings on the side, which looks so cool. And then he's got like these tiny little spring green legs which unfortunately do struggle to hold them up sometimes because those wings are so big. But you can see the wings are rigid hinges so you can move them up and down. And I think this guy is just a fun little villain for your characters to fight. Now something kind of interesting about this is all the pieces used for the eyeball in the original version of the build are also used on this version or just not used at all. Like none of the pieces from the eyeball are used in any other part of the build. So if you wanted to still have the eyeball in the center right there, you very well could. You could kind of combine the two versions because yeah, all the parts are still there for that. Now that would mean the wings aren't used at all and obviously these wings are super cool pieces so I personally want to use them somewhere. But yeah, you definitely have options for customization beyond just the two that are in the main set. But yeah, there you go. There's everything that's different in the alternate build of the shark ship, and honestly, I'm not sure which of the two I prefer. I definitely prefer, like, the thrusters out the back to the blasters out the front. However, I think I kind of prefer the ship on wheels as opposed to an airship. I don't know, it's just a ton of fun to roll this thing around. Regardless, though, both versions are super cool and very well done, and I think there's reasons to build both. I also want to take a quick moment to appreciate the instructions in this set, and in fact, in all the LEGO Dream sets. Because these are the best that instructions have looked in a while. Typically, I don't talk about the instructions in my reviews because it's just irrelevant. But look at this. This is so cool. It's fully illustrated on the front. It's not just like a crappy render. And like, as you flip through the instructions, everything is colored. There's little illustrations all throughout, like the characters and whatnot. After you finish a certain section of the ship, or if you get a new character, there's a new illustration. It kind of like tells a story that introduces new characters as you go through. And then when it comes time to like pick which version you want to build, you have two different options. And it shows you a preview of each. It tells you which page to flip through depending on which one you want to build. And each of those versions uses a different color for the background. So you can see, like, the ship build uses all blue, but then the car build uses all green. And it's just so much fun all throughout. There's even more than what I showed you in this video, but I'll leave that for you guys to discover if you choose to get the set for yourself. But I think that's about all for the build of the set, at least for now. So now let's take a look at the minifigures that come in this set, and then I'll give you my overall thoughts. So here are the first two minifigures in the set, Mateo and Izzy. And this is the full version of both of these figures. Mateo, for example, doesn't come with this full cape in every set. But yeah, these are the most complete versions of these guys, which is good considering that this is the most expensive set of the wave. You also can see Mateo as this giant accessory that's coming towards the camera right now. And that is actually Z-Blob. Let me fold it up so you can see him up a little bit closer. But yeah, you can see he's attached to the end right there. And I'm going to remove him from that rubber piece that he's attached to. And there's how he looks in Mateo's hand instead. You can see he's literally just an orb with little eyes. And I mean, it's pretty accurate to his appearance in the show. Now we get multiple different versions of Z-Blob in multiple different sets. And I believe this version of him does come in at least one other set. But this is like the most show accurate version of Z-Blob. Obviously, we do see the other versions in other episodes. But in most of the episodes, he's about this scale. So this is probably a pretty important one to get if you're a fan of the show. 
So it is nice that he's included here. However, I wish this version did come in a cheaper set. But yeah, he's attached to this big old green piece, so I guess Mateo can throw him out and he can attack. But on his own, he's just a cute little accessory. Taking a look at the minifigures themselves, though, wow, these are incredible minifigures. Lego went all out with this new theme. Both of these two are fantastic. Izzy might be one of my favorite minifigures of this year. Starting with Mateo, though, he's got this all new hair piece, which I think is great. Would love to see that recolored in other sets. But Mateo's whole thing is he's being powered up by Z Blob. So he's got these little green streaks in his hair, as well as one green eye. I think the expression on him is pretty good with his really wide smile. I love seeing a reprint of the Lego Batman movie belt in bright green. And he's got that Dream Chasers Hourglass logo in the center, and you can see Izzy's got the same thing right here. Dual world legs, of course, with jeans and sneakers. And then turning him around to the back, you can see that full cape. It's actually got a really interesting shape. It's not like a normal shaped cape. And flipping that up there, you can see this back torso print too. The build for his accessory is quite fun. It's like this giant pencil weapon like he has in the show. I think it was translated into minifigure scale pretty well. Removing his hair piece, there's a full look at that face print, as well as a look at his alternate face. I personally don't think this one's nearly as good. I just don't feel like it captures his personality all too well. But this one is pretty great. And there's how his torso would hit print look with that belt piece removed. And there's also a look at his back torso print. Mateo is all around a great minifigure. He does come in a lot of sets this way, so obviously this is far from the cheapest way to get him. However, the version with the cape is not super common, so that is nice to see here. And I do love everything you get with him. Fantastic minifigure. But he is nothing compared to Izzy. Izzy, as I said, is one of my favorite minifigures of this year. They went all out with this design. Before we even get to the minifigure, though, taking a look at her accessory, she comes with this all new molded sword piece. And it looks amazing. It's got this golden hill and a bit of gold that goes up through the center but then it's also dual molded with trans blue. It's got a stud at the front too if you want to customize it and add something there. But yeah, just look how incredible that looks. Such a cool accessory to get. But then the rest of this figure is incredible too. Starting on my favorite part, her hair piece. It is dual molded in like the sparkly pink and sparkly blue. That is such a cool color combination and unlike anything we've ever really seen before in LEGO. The closest thing I can think of is the hair piece for the LEGO Friends character in the LEGO Movie 2. What was her name? Sweet Mayhem, right? Was that her name? <laughs> her hair piece was somewhat similar to even that was a solid color. But I remember when I first got that piece thinking, wow, this is crazy. And that's exactly how I felt the first time I saw this piece too. It truly looks incredible in person. I highly recommend you guys get an Izzy minifigure, even if it's not from this set. She does come in a $20 set too, because this is just such a cool one. She uses the Praetorian Guard armor in Lavender, which is a cool recolor. And then she uses bright orange for a torso piece, which I think looks great. She's got like this armor on, and again, the Dream Chasers logo in the center. There's also a few silver sparkles at the top, which are a really nice touch. Just helps this figure feel extra elegant. But then she also has a waist cape around her legs, which again, just does so much to make this figure feel high quality. I love how she has like a bit of a printed skirt right here too. They tie together the physical cloth of the printing so well. And then just like Mateo, she has dual molded legs where she's just got like sweatpants on and sneakers. And then her face print is probably my least favorite part about this figure. It's not bad by any means, but I don't know if I'm the biggest fan of that expression. The blue eyebrows are a fun touch though. Her alternate face though is actually pretty good. She's just laughing and smiling. And then the back torso print is really crazy too. And honestly kind of gives me Ninjago vibes except for the colors. But yeah, that armor and everything. I could see those assets being used on a Ninjago figure. But yeah, for the main character, Characters of LEGO Dreams, these are two fantastic minifigures, I could not be happier with them. And then the other two full-size minifigures in this set are Nova and the Nightmare King. Now Nova, when these sets were revealed, I assume was just going to be a generic civilian minifigure, and while that's basically what she is, she does have more plot relevance in the show than I expected her to. She comes in multiple sets this wave, however, is definitely the least exciting minifigure here. Still though, she's not bad, you can see she's just got plain blue legs and pajamas that have like a little sloth on them, that's pretty cute. Turning her around, very basic design for a back torso print, not much going on there. Her hairpiece though, I actually really like, I feel like the hairpiece is become more common in recent years, but it is still a somewhat uncommon one. But I really like the recolor in dark red. I'm pretty sure that's all new for this figure, and it looks really good. Then taking that hairpiece off, there's a full look at her face print, which is all new for this figure. It's a good, just generic female face. And then turning around, she does have an alternate face where she's sleeping instead, because of course, this is Lego Dreams. She's dreaming. That makes sense to be here. But it's definitely still a good face print to get. It. And then the Nightmare King. This is another minifigure that looks incredible. Starting off this accessory, you can see he uses the same sword piece that Izzy uses. However, it's recolored to be black and trans pink instead of gold and trans blue. He does actually use the stud and the sword to attach one of those yellow eye pieces, which I think fits perfectly. But now coming to the figure itself, the coolest part for sure is the cape piece. Now this is an all new cape piece and it's actually like a rubber cape. And you can see it's just got like these shadowy spectral dragons coming off of it and this looks so cool. I think it would work really well for like a Ninjago villain in the future. I doubt they're going to use it because this is so specialized for this theme. But if you want to create your own like original characters or something, this is an awesome piece you can use. But the rest of this figure looks amazing too. He's got like this white cloaked hood piece with a crown coming off the top of it. The crown of course has another one of those yellow eyes right there. And if we remove that completely, you can see his full face print. He's almost got like a sort of skeletal design with these pink markings around his eyes and this very angry expression. And then he does also have an alternate face too, where his face is completely covered by like these gray bandages. Those gray bandages continue down to his torso print and to his leg print. And he's even got like little skeletal toes, which are super creepy. And of course, another one of those yellow eyes in the center. Removing his cape and taking a look at his back torso print, again, it's super skeletal. It's got like a spine going down the back with the ribs coming off of it. The title Nightmare King certainly fits this guy. And in my opinion, he was done pretty much perfectly. They may 
maybe could have given him a better expression. I suppose this one's fine, but I don't know. It's maybe not my favorite. But yeah, that is probably my one and only criticism with this figure. Along with Izzy, this is one of my favorite figures of the entire wave and might be even one of my favorite figures of this year. And then here are the final two figures in the set. And as I mentioned in the intro, I don't know what to call these guys. They're definitely not mini figures. They're a lot smaller, but they're definitely not micro figures either because they're bigger than micro figures. So if you guys have any suggestions on what we call this scale of figures, let me know in the comments because they come in a lot of the Lego Dream sets. But anyway, yeah, they are very interesting, very odd. You get lots of these guys across all the different sets and they each have different things about them that make them unique. But anyway, the villain versions of these guys specifically are called Grim Spawn, and the two in this set are Snivel and Susan. Now, Snivel uses like the Thanos big fig headpiece, so as such, his head is like bigger than his entire body, which is very silly, but it's the kind of thing I absolutely love. His head's almost designed to be like a little bomb too, because it's got a fuse coming off the top of it and then like this pink fire piece. That's also just the fire piece recolored in trans pink and you do get an extra bit in this set, as well as any other set that this guy comes in. And then he's got a super freaky expression where his mouth is just open, he's got his tongue coming out, and then on his little torso print he's got one of those yellow eyes. And yeah, they can hold a little bar piece underneath their shoulders right there. Then coming to the next figure, this is Susan and she is my favorite of all the Grimspawn figures. It is so funny that her design is so ominous and creepy, but then her name is just Susan. But this is an amazing figure. I really like her new mask piece. It kind of reminds me of the ghost tail pieces from Ninjago and it's still molded in black and trans pink. But yeah, it's like very spectral and wavy. It's got little holes in it and attachment points on the side for horns. And it almost looks like it's dripping down her face too. Super creepy. But then around the back, she just uses the classic Lego wing pieces, however, in trans pink, which is an all new recolor for this set. And those are really awesome. For the Ninjago fans watching this video, these would be perfect for like a crystallized skull sorcerer. I know obviously he didn't have the pink wings in the show, but I feel like they would fit him so well. Because man, just look how cool those are. Removing the mask piece, there's a look at her full face print. You can see it's just a bunch of eyes all over the place, kind of just randomly placed. Definitely super creepy. And then torso print just looks like she has some metallic armor and wraps and whatnot. So the Grim Spawn are very weird figures, but I kind of love them. Susan especially is fantastic, but Snivel too, I actually quite like. But now, overall, what are my thoughts on this set? I genuinely really love this set. It's easily my favorite of the LEGO Dreams wave. However, there are a few things that are important to consider before I recommend it to you guys. Number one is the size. This set definitely feels smaller than the price. At the scale that it's at, this feels like it should be like 110, 120 to me at least. Piece count wise, however, it is about a $140 value. Though you do have to consider some of those pieces aren't actually used in the set because they're for the alternate build, though most of the pieces are used. However, that being said, while the scale may not feel like it's worth $140, the level of detail, at least in my opinion, makes up for it because this doesn't just use a lot of big pieces to make itself big. There's so many intricate little details, and despite this being a Lego original theme that's like made for kids, this very much feels like it was meant to be a display model as well, but there's still so much to play with here. The other thing is the minifigure selection. While I do like the minifigures you get in the set, I kind of just wish there was more. Only four full-size minifigures in the biggest set of the wave is a little bit disappointing, but even if you count the Grim Spawn, I don't know, other sets come with more figures, so I would have liked maybe one or two more figures in the set. So when it comes to recommending it, I think it depends on what's most important to you, but I will say the build is fantastic. I genuinely can't really think of any flaws in the actual build of the set. There's no like awkward angles or anything. The only things are like, yeah, the deck space is not as big as I wanted it to be, but when a set looks as good as this one, I honestly don't mind that. But of course, those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think of this set in the comments below. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, make sure to leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and let me know in the comments which LEGO Dream set you want to see an early review on next. And as for this video, I think that's about all I got to say. So thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.